Now, for today's message, already in progress. Turn with me to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I know you read this. I know you have. You're smart. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. You know, we're doing a lot of things that we really don't have to do if we know better. <laughs> and and we, we're getting to know better. Amen? I want you to look first at uh, verse 16. Right there? This is God talking to the leadership of Israel. He said, tomorrow go ye down against them. Talking about those different tribes and people that were coming against them in the previous verses. Uh, you're in 2016. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse what? 16. You get that? Say, I got it. All right. Uh, Behold, they come up by the cliff of Z, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook. Before what? Now, let's go back up just to verse 15 again. He said, And he said, Hearken ye all Judea, or Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat. Thus said the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not what? But who? Now, that's, that's not just suspended over there in the Old Testament. That's now. Whatever you're going through, whatever is coming against you, your mentality should be, this battle is not mine. But whose is it? It's the Lord. Let me see it. Mine, but the Lord. Say it again. The battle is not mine, but the Lord. One more time. The battle is not mine, but the Lord. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, okay. Y'all excuse me a minute here. <laughs> I'm negotiating. But I know I don't win. And uh, listen, if you only understood how important you are to God, things would be less complicated for you. I know we as ministers have, we have really pounded you about your evilness and your wrongdoing and your this and that and the other. And I apologize for us all. <laughs> I don't know how far that goes. But, you know, God had me to understand something, and he keeps just pouring it into me more and more. And that is, is that he loves you more than anything you could ever imagine. God loves you. He loves you. Think about it. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. Now, most people think he's talking about the cosmos. He's not. He's talking about the world of what? People. Say people, people are important to God. Look at somebody and say, you're important to God. So what does that mean also? You also should be important to me. Come on now. See, you got to get this. The enemy will point out your flaws and your faults to get you to think about how insignificant you are. And surely if other people can't, they, they can't like you or can't trust you, you know, God can't. People are not God, and God doesn't think like people think until they get their mind straight. So God is extremely excited about people, even the ones that are out there in the down and out there, in the cracks and the crevices. God loves people. Tell somebody that said, God loves you. Look at somebody that said, God loves you. And who else should be loving him? And I do too. Come on, say, and I do too. So God, see, we, we have really been looking at everything that we are in as being an attack on us personally. But it's not. It's not an attack on you personally. Now, in one, on one side of it is that you get the chance to be used by God to prove him strong for others to see. I don't think you heard me. You get the privilege, the opportunity to prove God strong so others can see. God has to use somebody. Now, nobody really likes to be used in these situations that he allows you to be used in. Everybody said, let, let them have this in the Let them go. You let them have it. I don't, I don't have to. <laughs> but God has to have somebody. 
Ask your neighbor, can he use you? Yes. Come on, say it, say it seriously now. Can he use you? Because see, all the time we be crying and doing all, all this other stuff, you got to remember now. You remember this song, If the Lord Needs Somebody? Y'all don't remember that song. How many of y'all remember the song? What was the other part of it? <laughs> but when, when your time comes to be sent, <laughs> out against the armies of the enemies, when your time comes to be sent in the warfare, you said, now, Lord, you sure this is the one you want me to be in? But listen now, I'm telling you, he has to use somebody. Look, look at how he used Jesus. Who did he use? Jesus. Here Jesus come now, and they know all through the Old Testament that he was already prophesied to be the Son of God. Already. Isaiah talked about the kind of life he would have to go through. And people saw this, but they still couldn't hook him together. And here's Jesus going through all these different things. He was personally tempted by Satan himself. And with the folks on him and Satan being on him, they, you know, thought he was a demon himself, thought Jesus was a demon. So now, you got to understand, God has to use somebody. Doesn't matter what the situation is, God got to use somebody. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord go to and fro looking for someone on whose behalf he can show himself. Wait a minute. How is he going to show himself strong on you and you ain't doing nothing? Wait, wait. Come on now. How, he, how is he going to show himself strong and, and you, you won't arrive? He's looking for someone. Can I use them to wipe this out, to show this to be error? to show my perfect will. Can I, can I use it? That's, that's what he wants. And he tells us just like he told the children of Israel. Even though you're going through all this stuff you're going through, whether it's divorce, whether it's you know, being terminated off a job or you know, you're having difficulties in this situation, that situation. It doesn't matter. When I say it doesn't matter, it still boils down to you've been shown to be a possibility to prove God strong. Now, these are not self-inflicted wounds. And then you bring up on yourself. Go out there and, you, you know, you break the glass out of the police department. <laughs> it's just the Lord. No, <laughs> that is not God. That's not no, but things that you really didn't do anything, there's no reason you should be in there. But you're in there. And the only reason you're in there is because God found you. Now, when I say found you, in other words, there were a lot of people that he might have been able to use, but they were not usable. They didn't say yes. And you don't really say yes with your mouth. You say yes with your life. So the battle is not really yours. It's the Lord's. Because I don't know if this could be, I don't know if, it could, if it's the Lord, he sure ain't doing this. <laughs> Listen, God will do whatever needs to be done, but you got to let him. And bring it on down. I mean, in ho households, in homes. You might be connected with the biggest fool in the world. I didn't call your husband, your wife, no fool now. <laughs> but you might be connected to the wrong person. He told you you had the right one, baby. And you wake up all night and say, Lord, did I do this or did you do this? <laughs> <laughs> but remember, God loves people. He doesn't want anybody to go to hell. And somebody has to be the example for them to see the reality of God's word. Anybody throw their hand up for an easy task? Just don't eat this, eat that. <laughs> but when all hell breaks loose, and you're still there, yes. the Bible says, after having done all the stand, y'all don't know these scriptures, and you don't want to talk them now. You slide into the curve on them. After having done all the stand, 
See, y'all talking about, you know, the difference between potatoes and apple pie. No, <laughs> no. He's talking about the rocks and the hard places. After having done all of what? Stand. Still stand. Can you stand? I'm not about putting your hand on a, a block where they can chop your head up. No, no, that's not God. God is not at that. But God knows that you can be trusted when you let him use you. If you can use anybody. <laughs> And how far do you mean that? Before you get to step one at the door, you're ready to go back into the what? House. But I'm telling you, he's looking for somebody. In this day and time, there are so many tremendous areas that God is already required by his own word to have somebody in this earth to correct it. And that person is possibly you. Sometimes I mean, you got to buckle down and get deep into the word. So you can destroy some of the stuff and things that's in your life, out of your lives, so that you will not be tormented by that when you get ready to do it, when God allows you to go through this thing that you're going through. Listen, he, look at that again. He said, for the battle is not yours. Well, why we got to go through it? Why we got to show up in warfare? Hello? If it's not mine, how come I got to be in line? <laughs> Why, why I'm up here with, with, with the, the spear and the sword or the machete? What, look, he, he, he's got to use. You got your weaponry, but it's not physical. No. He said the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What are our weapons? Our words. Come on, church. Come on now. Don't play me like that. What are your weapons? Our words. You got to use your what? Your words. You, that's why you have to have confidence in, you know, the, the writer said, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask, that's word, anything according to his will, we know that's confidence. What do you do? You know. See, you got you to have that knowing about God. Do you know? Do you know? I remember those old saints back there when I was a little bit of boy, they sing, One thing I know, show sure been born again. I ain't sing them some, man. I'm sitting my little, I'm sitting myself, what they tell me I've been born again? You know, but I never asked the question. <laughs> you didn't ask that. But they, they sing those songs. But you got to have a reality of your birth in the kingdom of God. A lot of people are having that kind of difficulty, that kind of problem. They really are not sure as to whether or not they're really saved. Or they have good feelings from time to time, and these things are happening, and those things are happening. But when you're by yourself and the reality comes, are you really saved? You start thinking, maybe so, maybe not. No. There's no question about it. If you've done a Romans 10, 9, and 10, you be born again. Ain't about your feeling. It's about the word of what? God. What is it about? The word of God. It says about God's word. So I'm telling you, the battle is not yours. What is that home with your mate, with your children, with your job, your business? Whatever it is, it's not yours. But you've been found to be proven as to whether or not the word of God is a reality or a lie. You hate me on this job. You're at the right place, baby. <laughs> oh, y'all, I didn't mean to go there. ain't me my notes. But I'm telling you, we have to come to the realization that God has to use somebody. And you're the right one. Amen. My snape said, I know you're the right one. I know you're the right one. <laughs> See, everybody would like to take the easy task, wouldn't it? Just to be able to walk and shake and hang, hug people neck. Hello, I love you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> but when the fiery missiles come, those dots are coming your way. And you're smiling in the daytime and crying at night. <laughs> you don't know which way to turn. You prayed until it looked like you can't get no more prayer. You ain't prayed. That, you didn't pray every prayer. You brought up so you looking at other folk prayers and praying and reading them. <laughs> and no, there's no relief. And you don't realize that's not what your relief is. 
That's not where your relief is. Word says, it is praise that steals the enemy. Stops him in his tracks. Look how difficult it is for you to get a praise song out of your mouth when you're going through something. He wants to make it hard. You're praising God. If he loved you, he wouldn't have let this happen. He didn't. But because of the flesh and the way that people have taught this thing in most cases, it had to be God. God's trying you. If God got to try you, he's not God. You only try things that you don't know about. You're trying to find out what it will do and what it will not do. You try those things. But if you know a thing, you don't have to try it. You don't try eating. You eat. <laughs> Hush names, I know that's true. <laughs> no, you don't try that. But anything you don't know about, you have no real confidence in, you have to first what? Try it. God doesn't have to try you. He knows you. He knows what you can handle. You just don't know. You just don't know. But you will. And sometimes God allows people to go through things sufficiently so they know who they are and in whom they have believed. This is the hour. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is it. Yeah. The church is right at the brink of being caught away. But we're not going away as victims. We're not going away as weaklings. No, no. We're going away triumphantly. Victors are not victims. Masters. Yeah. So that's why... We have to press our way. When I say press our way, it's not pushing against nothing, but it means pressing to pray, pressing to praise, pressing to worship, pressing to read your word, pressing, 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 not externally, but internally. Putting yourself in a position where God can manipulate things for your behalf, on your behalf. Put you in a position where you are ruling and reigning like Christ said. We're not going out of here, weaklings. Running. The devil behind me. The devil going to be hard. They behind me. <laughs> Who are you going to get this help from? Nobody. So you might as well make up your mind. You start singing the praises now. Get your praise on. Amen. And you're not going to be able to do it when you're with, by, you know, with other people. It's really going to be when you're by yourself. If you can't sing those songs that mean it from your heart when you're by yourself with other people, it's not going to help you much. Because the enemy put more pressure on you when you're by yourself than he does while you're with. <laughs> See, y'all, hey, sister, help me. Yes, it's going to be all right, man. It's going to be all right. But then when you get by yourself, that rascal, whatever, he tries to put pressure on you. So I'm telling you, you're going to have to learn to do these things on your own. Got to be it. I'm telling you, you got to put, pump that iron by yourself, as they say. I'm telling you. So he, he's still here. God told them what was about to happen. Then he told them. He said, now listen. He said, the battle is not what? Yours. But whose? God. It's God's battle, but he has to use you as his weaponry. You're God's weapon against the enemy. One can chase a thousand. Two can chase ten thousand. One of us. Two of us. That's why it's so important for you to have a a personal prayer partner. You need somebody you can call. And you don't need nobody going to be helping you with your, your, your little situation either. You need somebody that's going to talk tough to you. Tough. Talk tough to you. And girl, you get yourself together. What you crying for? Man, what you doing? This ain't you. Now they have tough talk. Because if you talk to people lightly, you make them weak. Well, see, the, the Lord going to show up. No, he ain't going to show up. He already has. Jesus said, I have defeated him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Hold your Bible right there and turn to John chapter 16. God really loves himself some yo. 
He just changed my notes and stuff. <laughs> I'd be willing to teach them. All right. But I, I'm, I am flexible. I can go wherever you want me to go. Are you there? Yeah. Verse 32 and 33. He said, Behold, the hour cometh, yea, and now he is, that ye shall be scattered. He's talking to the disciples. Every man to his own. And you shall leave me alone. That's Jesus. They'd run off and left him. And yet I am not what? That's your mentality. Look at somebody say, he's reading this, but you need to catch it. What's that mentality? When everybody else is gone, I'm not alone. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. How, how, how many people can really grab hold of that? Uh, you know, how, how, can you can just really grab hold of that? Because, see, that, that, that devil has lied to many a person. That's why people get into wrong relationships. They think that they're alone and, you know, people... Uh, I, 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 you, you, you there by, by yourself? Oh, yeah, God, I'm here. And Jesus said, Lord, I'm with you always. Never lie like that. Let me hear you say, I'm never alone. I am never alone. Look at somebody and say, hold me accountable. Come on. For what now? I'm never alone. Who's with you? Well, now, God is. God the Father is in heaven. Jesus in heaven. The Holy Spirit is here. This is his ministry that we're enjoying. You call on God, the Holy Spirit has the answer. You call on Jesus, the Holy Spirit has the answer because he is God. Now, you don't pray to the Holy Spirit. And you don't pray to Jesus. You pray to the Father in the name of what? Jesus. Amen? Come on, look on down. He says, and you shall leave me alone. And yet... Come on. I am not alone. In other words, y'all going to leave me, but I'm not by myself. Come on, y'all. Did y'all get that? He said, what? Y'all going to... No, let me say it grammatically correct. You all are going to leave me. <laughs> but I'll not be by myself. See, that's the church's mentality. That's, that's how we should think. I'm never alone. Girl, I'm in the car by myself. Just me and Jesus. You're in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. Listen. He said, because the Father is with me. Now, he calls the Holy Ghost Father. Hello? Jesus calls what? God, what? The Father. Look at this. Turn back to chapter 14. I'm going to start reading at verse 7. He says, talking to Philip now, Philip then asked this question. Show us the Father and we'd be, we'd be satisfied. <laughs> Okay? He said, verse 7, If you had known me, you should have known my father also. From henceforth you know him and have seen him. Who is he talking about? He, who, he had, who is this he had seen? The father? I'm going to see just how, I'm going to see how, how sharp you really are. Throw your hand there and say, I'm sharp. All right, in the kitchen, now watch. Philip said, so Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. That'll, that'll satisfy us. You show us the Father. You see he with you, show us the Father. Come on down. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet, hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me has seen the Father. That's a John, 1 John 4, 17. As he is. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Why? He dwelleth in me. 
Greater is he that is than he that is where? Now, that might not sound like a reality to you, but you need to know that. If you don't really know that, I'm telling you, the consequences that you're going to encounter are going to be tremendously great. You're taking everything personal. It's not about you. The only reason you're here is to prove to the devil that he's an incapoo. Yeah, he, he, he got nothing going for him. Listen, listen. Uh, he said, I want to get on down. He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest that thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. Now, he's talking about the Holy Ghost. God never leaves the throne. Say, God never leaves heaven. Say it like me, God never leaves heaven. Do y'all believe that? What did you say, God never leaves what? Hunch name said, God never leaves heaven. I'm telling you. Now, turn over to John chapter 17. Hurry. Look at verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone. Talking about the disciples then now. They think that, that, that God, Jesus is only praying for them. But he's far, far going way beyond that. He's praying for us as well. Look, he said, neither pray for I these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their what? How do we believe on Jesus? Through their words. So he's talking about us, right? That they all may be what? As thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they may also, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me, Lord, do they need to read this? And the glory which thou hast, that, that thou gavest me, I have given to Thomas Paul Williams. Oh, 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 oh that's all right. And I, see, I know me. I know who I am. Look what he said. I have given to who? Them. What glory did Jesus give to us? His glory. The same glory that was on him is on every child of God. The same glory that was on Jesus is on every child of God. The same glory. The Bible says that that same glory that was on Moses is greater in us than it was on Moses. Listen, 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 listen. Come on down. Verse 23. You remember Jesus said the Father in him and he was in the Father? Look what it says. I in them, them who? Us. And thou where? Listen. That they may be what? Made perfect. Made what? That means having no problems, no difficulties, no uncertainties, no, no, nothing. It's not talking about just you being flawless in your beautifulness or your handsomeness. Now, that's good. That's good. But that's, that's not enough. You can be good looking and be having trouble in your life like all hell is broken loose. I, I know this might not be the easiest thing for you to digest now because maybe you're going through some stuff that you know you don't, don't believe nobody else has ever been through it but you. But there's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> there are no problems that are new under the sun. Somebody, some, a whole lot of somebody's have been through what you've been through and come out successfully. Yes, yes, yes. Tell your neighbor, I'm one of them too. <laughs> Look, it says, I in them and thou in me, that they may be one, but made perfect in, in one, and that the world may know. See, he doesn't want us to know this. That thou hast sent me and hast loved me, uh-uh, as thou hast loved me. He said he loves us just like he loved Jesus. What are you talking about the Holy Ghost here? The Holy Ghost is. Yes. Yes. Are you there? Amen. I don't feel nothing, Pastor. If you go by your feelings, you're not operating by faith because faith and feeling don't go together. Yes. Say faith and feeling. Faith and feeling. Don't, go don't go together. Now jump on back over here into uh, 2 Chronicles chapter, 9, chapter 20. Look at this now. <clears throat> I want to show you. Here it is. When you get this, I got it. Jesus. All right. Uh, are you there yet? 
Let's jump down at it. Verse 20 says, And they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. <clears throat> he says, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall you what? Church hadn't gotten that yet. It's coming. Watch this. Uh, he comes on down and he says, listen, uh, I want to just r- run on down to, to the verse 25, but I'll go to 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. Now he's going to fight. This man is going to a war where spears and arrows and stuff are going to be flying. And he doesn't call for the military to go out front. He calls for the praise team to go out front. And they're not, they're not shaking in their boots. Listen. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers and said unto the Lord, and that they should praise the beauty of what? That's the songs they had to sing. And you're going to find out what the words were. And as they went before the army, see that? These singles went out ahead of the men that had the spears and the swords and all this heavy artillery. And that is just not the place you want to be unless you really know God is on your what? Okay, okay, okay. Listen. And to say, this is what they were singing. This is their weaponry. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. That's the whole song. It was just re- re- repetitive. They repeated it over and over again. That was the song. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord for his mercy. See, you're trying to get a whole lot of new stuff to go in there with it. You need to know what, what you, why and what you praise him. He said, praise the Lord. Why? For his mercy endures forever. Praise who? Praise the Lord. Why? For his mercy endures forever. Now, here these, uh, these other men in the military that come to dis- destroy God's people, and they listening at these people up there singing, praise the Lord. He might have had, I don't, I don't know how many it was. It doesn't say how many he had. But listen, this little old bit of group, this little church choir, that's how, praise the Lord, and his mercy endures forever. Some of y'all would have gone to the house because you don't want him to say that. But you don't know what's happening. God's already setting up something. To destroy your enemies and you're looking at how it's sounding to you. It's not how it sounds. It's what's happening with the sound that's coming from them that are what? Anointed to sing. Notice now, it just wasn't anybody. Listen, he appointed singers. He knew these people weren't afraid to say what he told them to say. I don't know that song, Reb. That ain't the right one. You know, you stand on the side. That's you stand on the side. I want somebody that's going to sing it just like I tell them to sing it. Are you listening? That's, that's what he's saying. Listen. Ah, verse 22, and when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, and when they began to sing, ain't nothing happening. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, listen, and to praise, the Lord said ambushment. Who did it? The The Lord. Ooh, Jesus. See, you, we miss a lot of times. We miss opportunities. You're in a hurry to go somewhere. And the Spirit of God said, be still. Just be still. You don't know that he's trying to prepare you for what you don't even expect. Because he made you a champion in life and he's not looking for you to fail. It's not that you're going to be more anointed, that you're going to be more supernatural. No, it's because what he's about to deposit in you that will have more over the situation, the circumstances you're going to be confronted with than anything you could ever imagine. That's why he says, be still and know that I am God. Get yourself out the way because this is not about me. It's about God. The Bible says it's a dangerous thing to fall into the hands of the living God. How do you do that? By touching his anointing. You might as well get ready. Lord, 
I'm so tired. You just don't know what I'm going through. And the devil said, go ahead and go ahead on, girl. Go on, tell them all them stuff. Tell them all the things I did. And Lord, you know, yesterday and this did and all of it. <laughs> You've given the enemy weaponry to hold against you. You don't change your words based upon what you're going through. You change your attitude. Because it's your attitude that determines your attitude. When the fire gets hotter, your clothes will still be the same. They can't burn. Because the one that's in the fire with you, which will not let you burn. That's how we have to think. You got to think that way. I'm not going under. I'm going over. Uh-uh. I can't lose. He made me a winner. He said, I'm the head. And not the tail. Above only. And not beneath. I come behind and, and in all that. I, not some of the things, but in all. It doesn't matter how people have mastered what you've been doing. When you come in, the game changes. <laughs> Lord. Listen, listen, listen. Listen. Come on now. Uh, up down to 22, right? And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushment against the children of, the, of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Sinai, which will come against Judah. And they were smitten. Who was smitten? Them three nations that came against what? Israel. And it wasn't by swords. It wasn't by spears. It wasn't by the strength of the men. It was by the words of the praise team. <laughs> Praise ye the Lord for his. That night might not have been one of the top ten, but it was number one that day. <laughs> Tell you, it was number one that day. And it'll be number one in your life, too. When you make up your mind, I'm not just saying words. No, I'm being used as an instrument. God is going to show himself strong on my behalf. Because I'll sing it, not because I'm feeling like it's sounding good, because I know it works good. Praise the Lord for his mercy endure. God, you know what I heard. Praise the Lord for his mercy endure. They say, they say, they say. Praise the Lord for his mercy endure. The test came back. Praise the Lord, but his mercy endure. The economy is folding. Pray. See, God got to have somebody that'll say that. Not looking at the situation or the circumstances, but looking at God. How do you look at God? You look at his word. When you see the word, you see in Jesus. You see in God the Father. And you just encompass yourself with that word. Let the, the music in your house, let it be music that's word oriented. Word just saturated with the what? With the word. I don't need to be pumped up. I'm already pumped up. No, 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 no. I'm going to say this word because I know this word. Jesus said it'd be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. If I hide his word in my heart, <laughs> it doesn't matter what come against me. I'm a victor. I'm a champion. Cannot be defeated. Why? If God allows me to be defeated, he got to rewrite the book. All right, 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 all right. Come on, let's look, look at it again, look. He said, <laughs> uh, now watch now, uh, verse 23. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Sire, utterly to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Sire, every one helped to destroy another. They, they're killing each other. Said that. That's, that, that's, that's the way God does it. He will cause your enemy to be turned upon themselves. Instead of them coming against you, they start coming against each other. I've seen that so many times. I've seen that so many times. I remember they, they had me hemmed, them, hemmed up, they thought they had me, hemmed up. While I was at work, top people had me hemmed up over there in the office. For some little old nothing, look crazy, son. And they got to just, just talking, just talking. 
Now, you know, they're just this and this, this and this, because, you know, there's a lot of little crazy stuff they do, and I'm thinking not my thoughts, but his thoughts, and I'm acting his way. I'm cool. I'm cool as could be. Sitting up in there, and they got to fuss and got to fuss, and then they got to arguing with each other. The two head people got to arguing with each other. And then they, they got mad and can't call, their, call over another one of the uh, top people. So what do you think about this guy here? The guy looked at him. He said, one of the only men in this uh, district that I know can make a wise quality decision. He'd never said nothing like that about me. And he walked out. They told me, get on out of here. Just get on out of here. Well, I'm going to argue about it. I'm going to sit right here. No, no, no. I said, all right. I see y'all. They didn't mess with me no more for a long time. They're trying to figure out, they're trying to figure, well, see, you know, they're not going to leave. <laughs> but they're trying to figure out, what, what, how did they turn against each other? And here I am, and I was the object of their anger. <laughs> Are you listening? That's why he said, be still and know that I am God. Hunch your neighbor said, you might need to be still. And what's the rest of it? And know that he is God. Listen. Watch this now. Uh, watch this now. Watch this now. Watch this. Look, look. Uh, he t- mm, verse 24. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth. And how many of them escaped? And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil, now he's going to tell you what spoil is now, because some of y'all think it's the rocks and stuff. The spoil of them, they found among them in abundance. Both riches with the dead bodies. They had no problem, they had no problem picking them up on them, them dead folk. And precious what? Jewels. Now they carried all that into the battle now. All this they wore all that into the battle. They all that into the battle. Which they stripped off for themselves. They took that gold and silver and put it, put it what? On themselves. Listen. More than they could carry away. Now look. Look what was behind all of this that they were afraid of. See, the enemy knows. If he can frighten you away, he gets what you got and keeps what he has. And God doesn't want you just to have the little bit you got. He wants you to have what the enemy has. Because it rightfully belongs to you as a child of God. Listen. You see it in the story. Look what it says. Verse 24 again. Is that right? Uh-huh. No, and uh, yeah, 25, and when Jehoshaphat and his people came to the, take away the spoil of them, they found among them an abundance of riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels. You know, I see somebody wrapping their nose up now because they didn't want to smell the stink of the dead, but they weren't going to let that stink and get away from that, that bounty. Listen, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away, and they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. Tell you, it was so much. Now, you, you, you're slaving for something that God just wants you to pick up. If you defeat your enemy, the spoil is all yours. What's yours? The spoil. Say, the spoil belongs to me. But what was it that did the, what, was it that did the work? The praise. And you come and you don't even think it's important. I mean, this, this anointed group of people that God has established up there for praise and worship. You don't know. They are out there like you are the military people. And they are the ones that have been assigned by the king to go out front. And to sing praises. So all you got to go in is pick up the spoil. <laughs> ah. You got to get it. You got to get it. Got to get it. Amen. It's time to pick up the what? The spoil. Time to pick up the what? Spoil. So it's important. Praise is important. Praise precedes what? Worship. You cannot worship God until first you have what? Praise. Now. Ah. Uh, I'm about to pass over them. Let me give you some differences so you can recognize because you don't just go in from praise to worship. There's a shifting. In other words, uh, praise is kind of strong. 
It might make you jump and dance and do all this. But worship will flow you. Worship with what? It'll flow you. Listen, you got to get it. Worship is not a feeling, but an attitude expressed by one who knows that. Worship is not what? A feeling. It's not a feeling. Well, you notice when we, have, when we have praise music, you're feeling get involved, you dance, you jump, you holler, you run. That's not worship. Worship will hold your feet to the floor. Say, worship will hold your feet. To the what? To the floor. Now, deep worship will cause guidance for your future, for your family, for your city, for your business. Deep worship. Deep worship. It'll stimulate those things in your mind and in your heart. That's why the enemy doesn't like for... Now, the, let me say... You all can't, you don't have much time as you, there's more time given to praise than there is to what? Worship. Because people really don't like too much worship song because it doesn't make them jump and bounce and dance around. But see, worship is really where you get all of your revelation, your insight, your witty invention. Okay. Okay. All right. Praise focuses on proclaiming the works of God. But worship focuses on the person of God. What did I say? Praise focuses on proclaiming the works of God. But worship focuses on the what? The person of God. Praise is initiated by us. Worship is God's answer to our praise. Praise is initiated by us. In other words, we know we get to get, get that going on. But worship is God's answer to our praise. So that helps you to understand that praise has to go before worship. Since worship is what? God's answer to our praise. All right? To praise is to seek God. To worship is to be found by him. What did I say? To praise is to seek God. But worship, that's what? It's to be found by him. Do you remember what Jesus said? He said God is looking for someone who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Tell your neighbor God's looking for you. Come on, come on now. Praise increases the anointing. And that's where most people stop. And they miss this because worship brings the glory. That's the miracle, signs and wonders. They stop right there at the anointing. And there's nothing wrong with that, but God got some further to carry you. Praise does what? It increases the anointing. But what does, what does worship do? It brings the glory. Praise is like building a house for God. Worship is God moving into that house. You want to build one for him or you want him to move in? <laughs> in praise, we talk about God. In worship, we speak to God and he answers us. You see why that's so necessary? One has to have the other one. You just can't do one without the other. And see, people get antsy because they're just not accustomed to really letting God have any time with them. They're not accustomed to that. That's why you need to be here, if at all possible, before the praise gets started. Why? They are helping you to prepare yourself to go in and pick up the spoil. Oh, Jesus. You, you got to get this. Oh, my time is up. <laughs> get a lot of hand clap.
invite you to stay connected with us. Find us on YouTube at ASCC Ministries and find us on Facebook at Agape Storage.